With the WHO having just released new guidelines that raise the number of people eligible for ART to nearly 26 million, it is crucial to ensure that the price of ARVs remain affordable, not just for first and second line drugs, but also for some of the newer drugs that have just become available or soon will become available, um, and that people in an increasing number of our projects actually need. These ARVs will be important to those who have exhausted other options, but not only this, these drugs may also be used in the near future in first or second line therapy to improve these regimens. What we see in this year's prices is the price of first and second line drugs is coming down, but that the price of these newer drugs is many times higher. WHO now recommends the one pill, once a day combination of tenofovir, lamivudine or emtricitabine with a favorance. Again, to reiterate, this is the preferred option for treating adults. It's one pill once a day. And over the last year, since we've had an additional producer that has been pre-qualified and quality assured, the price has come down 19% from $172 per patient per year to $139 per patient per year. In addition, just this past week, there was one other manufacturer who obtained US FDA approval. This change is not exactly reflected in our report, but we anticipate the price to go down even further for this combination. We should also add that South Africa has been negotiating with countries directly due to their larger volumes with manufacturers, has obtained even lower price for this combination. But to date, this price, as we know, is not available outside of South Africa. If you were also to split the combination, so to make that two pills, the price can be as low as $99 per patient per year. For the second line treatment, we've seen a 28% decrease for both protease inhibitors, the atazanavir ritonavir as well as the lopi ritonavir. This is also a result of scaling up of generic production for both these products. Overall, the price has decreased by 75% since 2006 for second line treatment, and a current regimen is now available at $303 per patient per year for second line treatment. This still is twice the price of first line treatment, but again, the important point is that this price is again not accessible to all countries. Finally, so while the first and second line treatment prices continue to go down, we're seeing that prices for the newer drugs are still quite high. And these are going to be drugs needed for salvage regimen for patients who've exhausted all other treatment options. The price currently is 15 times higher than first line therapy. So that is about $2,006 to treat one patient for one year with the newer ARV drugs. There are nearly no generic versions for any of these newer drugs. And this is a result of patents that block generic production. There are licensing deal by, deals signed by the originator companies, but these deals largely leave out middle-income countries. So as a result, countries such as Thailand and Jamaica pay $4,760 and $6,570, respectively. And this is just for Darunavir, the new drug alone. Paraguay pays $7,782 just for Atravarine, and Armenia pays $13,213 just for Raltegravir. And this is just one of the three or four drug combinations that are needed for a full regimen of third-line therapy. Today we see uh, second-line treatment being coming down to around $300. Um, when we started doing the patent work, um, these drugs were extremely expensive, unaffordable, and generic companies were absolutely unwilling to make them looking at the new TRIPS regime in India. So it's definitely good news for us. The work has paid off. Patent oppositions have worked in bringing down the prices of medicines to $300. But not all countries are lucky enough to access these prices. Um, they have patents in, in countries like Ukraine, in Vietnam, in Malaysia, which block these countries from accessing the very good prices that are available in the international market. So you may have affordable treatment available at $300, but you can't buy it because you have local patents. For example, tomorrow's uh, late breaker session will actually highlight some of the very high prices in Malaysia, and I would encourage you to take a look at that session. Number two is that uh, on, on the news about newer medicines, I'm, India is a very key producer, and as you can see, tenofovir uh, single-day pills, uh, second-line medicines are all coming out of India, and uh, 8 million people who are on treatment, majority of them are Indian generics. Can we sustain this kind of production? Possibly yes for first-line, second-line, 
But for the newer medicines, these drugs are patented and local production is looking bleak. Um, and that is why in a Mumbai clinic, we pay over $1,700 for one of the patented drugs that we use for patients who are on salvage therapy. So there's some good news. We do indeed see first and second line treatment becoming so much more affordable. And that has translated into WHO providing very simplified guidelines uh, in 2013. I would say the WHO guidelines are absolutely phenomenal. And Indian genetics help us implement those WHO guidelines. But countries will have to address those patent barriers.